we have uh, somebody who does want to talk to us. You know, so there are people who want to talk to us in the world. And it's it's important to remember that. You know, whenever you're feeling alone, there's always somebody you can usually go to. I mean, I don't know you, but you there can, probably is. You know, you uh, can usually come to us. Too. You can usually come to us, and that's a, that's an important thing too. It's an important thing. You can usually come to us, uh, usually live at 7 p.m. Central Time Fridays, and and that's and that's what we're doing right now. We're going to go ahead and talk to our next caller here. We have Jim. Jim, who's calling in from New Jersey. Uh, Jim, you're live on Truth Wanted. Uh, how's it going? Hello. Hello. Um, how's it going, Jim? This is uh, an atheist. Well, you know, that's correct. This, is, this, ho- this show is primarily hosted by atheists, yes. Um, I don't, I've just, you know, I'm a Christian. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I've heard like many times, like, um, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but like faith is like anti-reasoning mm. or like, I've just heard that. And, um, or like just being like a Christian and just having faith is just, um, like you can, it's like anti-intellectual. Um, but I don't, I just, I'm just like wanted to make it, make that like, Known that it's not mm. anti-intellectual. Interesting. <clears throat> okay. Well, maybe. What do you what, think it is? Yeah, I was gonna say, have MD. Maybe you take this one first. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Yeah, Jim. What? What do you? You know, you may have heard it said uh, that faith is the excuse people give when they don't have good reasons. Uh, what, what's your definition of faith? Okay. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Like the the Christian faith is like you don't even have faith that God exists. Um, it's just like it's part of like the Christian Bible. Like it's not you don't even need faith. It's you already have the knowledge. Um, but like, how do you get that knowledge? Uh, oh, I just I believe that I've had it since ev- ever. What does but, that mean? Can you explain yeah, that a little bit? I, I, do you have any other knowledge that you've had since ever? What other knowledge do you get the same way? Like the definition of God through the Bible mm-hmm. lines up with my experience from birth. What experience? Like so, what specifically? Give me an definition? example. Well, like um, I... I think that most, peop- most people have a similar sort of experience of life, right? You like go to sleep, you wake up in the morning, you eat something, you like go do your daily tasks. Most people have a relatively similar life when you think about the broad, you know, the broad spectrum of human, of like experiences that are possible. We all live on the same planet and most of us live, I, I see you live in New Jersey, so you live in the same country as many of the people on this show. And uh, so like what specifically have you experienced that confirms your uh, or affirms your belief in God? Because obviously we don't have, we haven't had that same experience. Mm -hmm. So my, like my belief, in like my faith oh man like it the experience that i've had like so like a powerful experience all right so basically it's like i believe in the father the son and the holy spirit and the father is what i've known from the beginning and through the son and faith on the son to give us the spirit is what this sounds like christianese to me i don't know what this means can you explain it like i'm a like i'm an idiot atheist yeah i'm explaining like i i I experienced the power of god Mm -hmm. through the spirit after like say 26 years when i when i heard the gospel yeah but it what does that mean what does it mean when you say you experience the power of God, what does that mean? Give me a specific example of an experience you've had. Mm-hmm. An experience um, of the power. 
I believe that I received the spirit of the God that I knew from my birth of the flesh. Hmm. And it was through... I understand you believe that, but why do you believe that? What, um, yeah. it's under, what do you mean by spirit? <laughs> um, eternal life. Okay. You've experienced so, eternal life? Yes. Maybe Already. I can take this in a different direction if you if you other hosts don't mind. I know you guys are very experienced at this, but I'd like to give it a shot here now. If if uh, Jim, if I if I came up to you because I know some folks who are really into the Reiki. You ever heard of the Reiki? You know what Reiki is? Oh yes, yes. Right. Yes, okay. So Reiki. There's a lot of people who are into that, and they say, you know what? When that Reiki healer came up to me, I could just feel his spirit in me, right? Like I could just feel that happening. And there's lots of people that talk about that. You see it on YouTube, you see it in news stories, things like that now. But if I came up to you and, and said, this is why I believe in Reiki, because I feel this, would that be convincing to you? No, mm -hmm. because I know that it was, I know that it was from a man. Now, I'm not hundred sure. percent sure of what Reiki is that's actually. fair and that's fair um, but but I'm trying to give you some perspective right so I hear you calling us and you're telling us that you had this feeling that was one time and that's why you believe it can you see why that might be hard for us to find that convincing um yeah I I, I know I mean I, I believe that you you need to feel something you know well, I'm, sure. not, I'm not afraid of it. you know I don't I don't see how um, how God can actually, you know, give, you know, how can he, how can we not feel anything, right? But well, it's also... Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's, Jim, do you think that we as atheists, that we don't feel anything? Well, I think, like, they, like, no, no, I don't. Okay. Because I think that we feel things all the time, right? We feel things just as, as much as any Christian or anybody else. But the difference is we don't attribute those feelings to the supernatural, right? We typically have natural explanations for all of those feelings. So if I was to ask you, it, which feeling that you had was supernatural versus one that was a natural one, how would you tell the difference? So, like, the, the experience that I had was the experience that is only through what this gospel so like there, there's a there's a promise that you would have an experience according to the the gospel, and 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 the promise is through whoever puts their faith on the Son of God, you know, through the gospel. I'm sure you, I know I'm, I'm pretty sure most atheists, you know, grew up in church. So I'm, sure, but um, so like I believed in in the Son because I believe in my sins, and I believe that. Um, I had no way to pay for my sins, but through God giving us mm -hmm. his holiness and his... So, I'm sorry, just because right. this show is very different and we have a very particular time allotted to us for calls, so I, I want to try to cut things to the chase just a little bit. Just going back to my question, right? I was asking, how do you tell the difference between a feeling that was natural versus a feeling that was supernatural? In other words, let's say one of us had a natural feeling and one of us had a supernatural feeling. How would we be able to tell? Um, I mean, I personally, this is what I say. Is I know that what I receive can live forever in heaven. And it's not based on myself, but it's his faithfulness, which can endure forever. Okay. How did you, what criteria did you use to come to that conclusion? Um, just what I what I know and believe. It's just a hundred percent. Okay, what I can't control. But so, no. So again, I, I want to go back to this example here of the Reiki, right? Somebody who's really into Reiki. This is what they know, and this is what they believe, and this is what they've been told by other Reiki healers. That look, this is the feeling that you're going to get when we do this ritual, because they do a lot of those kinds of rituals in Reiki, and that's how. Let's say this hypothetical person n says that they know that this is real because someone gave them that perspective. Kid, do you see how that might be a little bit of a problem? Do you see how maybe an environment can, can affect how somebody might interpret their experiences? Um, 
Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's so like they they had um, they went to Reiki. I'm right. sorry, I wasn't. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, just to, so so again with Reiki healers, right? You know, and again, I'm just pulling out an example because there's a lot of different examples you can make of this. But I, I'm just picking on Reiki for a second. So we go to the Reiki healer, and somebody goes up to that Reiki healer, and they say, "This is you're going to experience a feeling when we do this ritual because this is what this practice teaches." And then they do that ritual and they experience that feeling, and that's how this person knows that Reiki is real because they experience that feeling. Now. I think you can see the problem with that, Jim, right? The problem is, of course. Well, I don't, I, well, the, well, the problem is that they're telling them what they're supposed to interpret based on that feeling. But you can interpret a lot of different things based on a feeling, right? It doesn't have to be just one particular train of thought. In other words, feelings might not be the most reliable way of knowing something. Do you at least agree with that? Well... When it comes to God, like say Reiki was telling you that you would experience God, I wouldn't believe that for a second. Yes. But, but, but do you see how but, if, no. if somebody said a baptism or if a prayer you experience God, why, why we wouldn't believe that? Um, no, I, I don't see why you wouldn't believe that. I, here's here's the reason why I believe it. I mean, because, I mean, like, I needed to believe it. Mm. So I, I chose to believe it because I truthfully believe that, I, you know, I'm going to hell. Mm. Well. So, and, you know, if, if, if what I received through that promise, like, it's just what I believe. And mm. it's what many people believe. Um, so that, I mean, I, I don't see, I don't know, but then um, again, you know, another I, I have a thought here, yeah. Jim, I mean, based, if we go like what, um, Rob boss is talking about, yes. um, he, he's, he's been kind of delving into like the process of how you came to have this belief, um, that you currently have. And he's been asking a lot of questions about your criteria and how you have, you know, adjudicated these things, whether, you know, he's asking these questions to see if we can get some clarity on how you have reasoned your way and like, what is your reasoning for your belief? Um, you called in to say that, that as a Christian, you have heard people say that like faith is against reason. And I think what we've heard from you today is that it's a feeling and that you just explained just now that you needed it because you had a fear of hell, which is another feeling. Can you understand a little bit more why some people, and I'm not saying it's the right thing to go around saying that to somebody, because I think that it's not helpful to call somebody um, unintelligent, but can you understand um, when we've had these conversations with people and we don't get these solid, consistent reasoning, why someone might say that faith is um, anti-reason or against reason? Um, because I, I think we've so, heard a lot of kind of, you know, a lot of, I mean, um, MD called it Christianese. So uh, like mumbo jumbo, I heard a lot of theology. I heard, um, you know, some like sincerity coming from you, but um, we haven't really heard solid reasons or consistent reasoning coming. So um, it's yeah, kind of- Yeah, if you want us to believe that you're reasonable, reasonable and that yeah. faith is reasonable, then you have to give us a reason. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, some people might say that you um, don't like, have good reasoning, and then you can interpret that however um, uncharitably you would like. like. So, like, for me, it's reasonable for me to have seen the, first of all, understand, like, I've always believed that God was holy, but seeing his laws. So, hang, hang on, hang on. Can I, I, I just yeah, want to stop you for one second, Jim. So you've always, always believed, believed that God is holy. You've already jumped past the first question, which is, does God exist, right? So you have basically, it sounds like, you've been brought up in a way that means that you've never truly questioned your belief in God. Would you say that's true? Have you ever truly questioned whether or not God exists? Um, well, I, I wasn't raised up that way i mean it, it wasn't like commanded that i believed in god but it that's wasn't. not what i said right i'm not saying that someone commanded you i'm asking if you personally 
ever really questioned your belief? Um, I think so. Um, and how did you resolve really that questioning? I just never, I didn't, I don't, um, I never cared to, um, I always thought it was good, but I, I just, that's a um, different question, right? Questioning whether God, I don't think, I don't know how I would, I never found, found it to be a, a, a profitable route, but have I questioned? I think I have questioned, you know, I think I have, I just, I mean, how much can you question? How did you, you know? I mean, that's, well, that's a, Pretty much well, how, so how did you solve that? So like for me, when I, I, I was raised as a Catholic and, uh, and it was not really like forced upon me, but I was just sort of grew up in the milieu of, um, of religion, right? Everyone just talked about God as though it was, you know, it was real and it was a thing and it was a thing, it was, you know, as normal to believe in God as it was to, you know, believe that gravity existed. And I never questioned it until I, you know, read some books. I went off to university. I started thinking about other things and it made me think about my belief in God. And, uh, and so I decided to resolve that question. I had to go do research and I started reading and listening to people talk and, you know, uh, watching atheist experience and things like that and uh and so i did some research and i did some thinking of my own and i figured out why i believe the things that i believe and so i'm asking my question to you is if you're saying that you really went on this you had a you know a period where you were questioning whether or not god existed how did you resolve it what was your method I don't remember a, a, a long period of time where I really started questioning it, but I, I, I'm, I'm sure, I mean, I wasn't really, you know, religious growing up and, you know, God wasn't really like, and I really, it just wasn't, it could have, he could have been, it could have not been. Um, mm -hmm. But it, I mean, I never would have said that I don't believe in God or like he can't be real not it was just always well i'll put it to you i'll put it to you this way oh we got some we got some some wolves howling in the background with this oh, this spooky yeah, halloween sorry. episode uh yeah. you know like I, we, we do have to sort of get things going with the show here because we got some other surprises yeah. fun plan but i, I want to try to end you know have some sort of resolution here with you jim uh, objectively dan you know he's from a town called waco texas you may have heard of waco texas it got very popular in the news because of a cult there called the branch davidians okay and they actually still exist the ones that are left out there on the compound but you know the short of it is they truly believed that the man that lived at that compound was the messiah and that they gave them that sense they believed that because of the feelings that they got from that man when they talked about his holiness and his experiences, you know, the, I can't take away those, the experiences of those people, right, that lived on that compound. But you and I both know, Jim, that David Koresh is not the Messiah. He's not holy, right? But how do we know that? Yeah. How do we know that? We know that because, I mean, I mean, that's what you really have to ask yourself, honestly. That's what you have to figure out. How do you know that this guy isn't the Messiah, but Jesus Christ is? Or any other person, for that matter. You know? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I could, I could, and I mean, I, I already believe that I have the Messiah. I, I know you I do. Believe that. But yeah. in, in our eyes, I, Jesus really isn't any different than anybody else saying they're the Messiah. You know. So we really have to think about that, but. You know, Jim, I, I really, I, you know, we do have to get things going here, but I do appreciate the conversation. And, and maybe on a normal night, I think objectively, Dan would probably want to talk to you instead of me. You know, I'm just a painter. I'm not really, a, you know, this, this, this show host thing. I, I offered to fill in for his services tonight. But, uh, Jim, I, I'm going to let you go with, with that one. And uh, thank you so much for calling, honestly. I appreciate your candidness and being able to talk to us, especially to three atheists. That, that's spooky. It's a very spooky thing to talk to three atheists. I mean, near Halloween, no less. That's like, 
that's bad luck or something. I don't know. They, they, something could happen to you, but I'm sure you'll be okay. 